just been having a little chat with Delilah and um, following our little road trip over to see Harry Brew 69 Chris over in Retford on Saturday something's been sort of like zapping backwards and forwards in my head this is my mash tun and as those who've watched and yeah I'm about to give it a good clean don't panic those who've watched previous videos will know this is where I put the sight glass for either the research or the herms or the um, the sparge and it's basically a bulkhead fitting inside there's a cam lock fitting and then I clamp a little tube on there now Chris uses um, a hop spider I mean this is my fairly big hop spider as people will know which goes in kettle and I've been wondering and I think I'm probably all right here that distance between here and the rim I think I can pop a hole oh hold on we got someone at the door I'll be quick it's got pretty girl just come around so pop a hole here as I have done with this and then I can put something like this or maybe a bit smaller and shorter but I've got a box full of stainless steel rods over there uh, tubes and fittings coming off that with an elbow into here so that it then pushes out and then all I've got to do I'll get um, a male and female cam lock well you know but thingy join up joiny uppy so I can just join two of these hoses together coming out of so we'll come out of here down into the pump out of the pump and up into the side of the boiler make sense now the only problem is I'm doing a brew tomorrow the last thing I want to do is create loads of swarth so I went to B&M bargains and I found some sort of like clay stuff clay clay so what I'm going to do is just make a little clay dam on the other side and then drill in through here I just need to make a 10 mil hole in there so my guess is I will start with uh, a small drill and then work up to 10 mil and then I'm going to use this I think they're called a Q max or something punch and then that just punches a nice clean hole in and just run the deburring tool around it a little bit of emery cloth and hopefully there won't be too much mess so anyway I'm gonna go over now spend some time with a pretty girl and then start drilling this later back in a bit back to it and this stuff in half bloody weird it's so I don't know what it feels like it's very lightweight it's quite I don't know it's weird but it's nice it's <laughs> never mind um, <laughs> so I've uh, got my pilot hole and I've literally just stopped as the drill went through I've pushed it back through from the other side so this is my little swarf trap and with a two mil bit one and a half two mil bit I'm not sure what it is only little so now I'm gradually going to build the size of the L up but I'm going to get a lump of this and pop it onto the side to stop any swarf or stop most of the swarf getting inside my kettle have I taken yes I've taken the hop spider out so this is where we now start stretching the hole no just don't just don't do it hmm looks like we're about halfway there oh I'll just clean up some of the um, tiny bits of swarf from the other side and this is what it's managed to capture 
So I'll just squeeze that in on itself. It's weird stuff. I can't describe really what it feels like. Right, so that's our 10 mil hole. And I see all this down here, these tiny little bits of swath. I will just pick them up with this stuff. It's not a bad 2 99 spent and there's loads more in there so I can play and make some models and stuff. Right, I'll clean all that up properly, obviously after I've finished. It was a bit of a foolhardy thing to think about doing um, just before doing a brew because I'm not going to have the chance to give it a proper clean. But now we use this. I need to go and make sure I've got the right size Allen key and thing. But really that goes on tin side, that goes on tap side, and you tighten that and it squeezes that through that. So I'm going to get a little bit of cutting compound, a little bit of like luby lube, and then we'll get that all set up. I'm actually quite impressed with that. Me little pink hole stuff, whatever it's called, like play thing. Sorry, anyway, right, we're all ready to go with this, so I'm gonna go and get Allen key and a, a, a an extension bar. Now, because I've done this before quite a few times, I know that an Allen key alone doesn't give me the leverage, so I have this, uh, I think it's a jack handle or something or other. And, um, and I know I'm not gonna be able to do this. Oh, I might be able to do it one-handed. What this really does is, as it tightens that, oops, sorry. As it tightens that bolt in, now I'm gonna need both hands. It pulls the cutter, the free um, toothed cutter through. But I'm gonna need both hands, sorry. Uh, I've had two pings, so there's one more ping, and that will be it then. That will have cut our owl, so I can take that. that. Oops. And that then should just pull out. So if you haven't seen one of these before, it is one of the most useful tools you can have for any form of metal working. What I'll now need to do is just get the grips on there, or get a spanner on there, get the um, hex key on there, and just undo it. But I'll need two hands for that, and then I'll show you uh, what comes out. And I'm going to then get deburring tool, just deburr that a little bit. That should leave very, very little swarf inside that needs cleaning out. Because the last thing you want on a, <laughs> on a brew is little bits of metal in there. Really, believe me, you don't. And there we have, that's the bit that does the cutting. So that pulls through and chomps into the metal and that's what's left. Let's see if we can, no, I'm gonna have to get, gonna have to get some force on that to get that out and then show you what it looks like. Ooh, dainty. And that's what you're left with. There's an awful lot of force that you can exert on that. And now what I'm tempted to do is measure that. That looks like about one mil, but we'll see, because we had a conversation yesterday about the thickness of these, because they are, they are like fucking bulletproof. They really are. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna clean the, what am I doing? <laughs> Go on. See, I'm looking at, I'm looking through here and then trying to put my, my finger through the, in the don't you shouldn't do that you shouldn't do that with something that you haven't cleaned up yet right deburring tool very impressed with this pink stuff look how much swarf it has managed to pick up so i think that was worth 2.99 because there's still shed loads of it left as well so picking up swarf and for the stuff it doesn't pick up, one of these handy little air dusters. Um, we'll just get rid of the rest 
The swarf's amazing, it's like glitter. Swarf will go absolutely bloody everywhere. Right. Yeah, just uh, make sure that our little girl here hasn't been too badly right. covered in swarf. I did put my homemade safety caps on top of that's the water side um, so it's not uh, it wasn't as critical but I thought do you know what I don't want it anywhere well I didn't do I didn't put a cap on there I was gonna cut the finger off her hang on let's right got away with that a few more bits on there good and you know that thing, have I drilled the hole in the right place? If I drill it too low, this bit's going to get in the way. Do, 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 do. Look at that, like a pro, like a boss. So I'm just going to tighten that up a little bit. And I'm going to put, um, I'll probably put a tri-clamp fitting on there so that I can blank it off. And then put a cam lock fitting on inside. Hmm. Now the idea was to put a cam lock on the other side so then I could clip on like I do for the um, mash tun sparge arm but it will protrude too much because we have this line here which this fits perfectly so this now I'm going to have to leave it like that. And what I'll just have to do is screw in. It'll be all right. I can do this before it comes up to the boil. And then pop an elbow on here, boom, like this. And I've then got the recirculation. So, what I'll do, I've thought I'd grabbed, yes I had, a couple of cam locks and connected them together so I don't have to use a longer hose. I can use the hoses that I have already got. got a washer in it I can sell oh it's probably that one that I found earlier on the floor then okay let's pop that in and see right so that there and then coming out of the pump, which is currently that one. Okay now, one-handed, look at this. Is now our recirc. We don't need it going through a filter. Uh, that's um, a chugger pump down there. So it doesn't really clog very easily. So we'll come out of the kettle, this out of the kettle, down to the pump, out of the pump, into this new fitting. Good. So that has been fettling around, fettling around, to make a kettle copper recirc. And essentially all that then does is chuck the wart straight back into here and um, push it out through the edge of this basket which is filtering the hops from getting too much into the rest of the wart if that makes sense. Good that's a little project dusted and dunded 
and uh, now I know I can feel it in me water God, that wind's getting up that there's still lots of tiny little bits of swarf so I'm going to clean the kettle out again give everything a good blow down can't be a blow job before a brew and uh, for those who want to know these little things they're about 30 quid you can get it from Amazon for about 80 quid called Ompolo or Omolopolo or whatever but this one I think this is about 30 quid and for years I've been using those little aerosol spray cans in the electronics industry you use them to blow out dust from computers and stuff like that rechargeable USB rechargeable 30 quid can't fault it there's another there's another extension that um, you put on which has got a brush on the end which is brilliant for cleaning out computer fans and stuff that's it crikey that's been a long old video about modificationing modificationing a uh, a kettle to do a, a proper research rather than just dangling the hose in which is what a lot of people do just dangle it in um, there you go I think that's for me if I want to keep the temperature I'm gonna to need to put a lid on and when you put the lid on this kettle do you know what is that <laughs> of course the lid bit is now touching. doesn't matter but it means I can keep the temperature in there when I'm doing kind of recirculation at 80 degrees and stuff and steeping after the boil all right I hope you found that interesting it's quite a load of waffle uh, and well impressed with whatever this stuff is called um, well I know what it's called it's called um, it's called super soft clay and it's magic super soft clay lightweight blah 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 so I'm going to actually read what it is on the thing no mess yep air dries bright colours highly recommended B&M bargains if you found this rubbish interesting, please feel free to subscribe. Tomorrow we're brewing the greatest president that never was, the Bernie Sanders special New England. Well, I'm actually going to call it um, the Sanders Vermont something. I can't remember. I wrote it down. It's probably nothing, nothing like that. But in, uh, in recognition of Bernie Sanders, Sanders yeast, in Bernie Sanders, who was the greatest president, never elected. That's it. Cheers.